Counter-seasonal and counter-cyclical diversification strategies are not common. However, they can be used by organizations to reduce revenue volatility and grow new revenue streams. The easiest way to think about whether either strategy could be applied is to consider the industry first. For counter-seasonal, we are often thinking of the influence of different weather seasons. Although there can be other seasonal impacts, such as certain times of the year that events and festivals are held. The food industry is one industry we commonly associate with seasonal fluctuations. Tourism is another industry that is generally stronger in the summer months than winter. Let's look at examples of the challenges here. Ice cream is not a great seller in the middle of winter and it's not very practical to try and ski down a rocky slope in summer. If you are an organisation in one of these industries, then you expect a significant amount of your revenue to come in your busy season. So, is there anything you can do to counter this for the off season? A while ago, tourism resort operators in the ski fields realised that mountain biking was a fast growing sport. They began looking to see what downhill and cross country mountain bike trails you could establish on the ski fields. In more recent times, top level sporting clubs and athletes have also used ski resorts for pre-season altitude training and resorts have begun pooling resources together to hold gruelling adventure races to build brand awareness that there is a product offering in the off season. The ice cream operator would need to think about what food products they could sell in the winter months. Crepes and waffles are one possibility. However, it is important to note here that just because there is another product you could sell does not mean it is a straightforward revenue generator. If you are Ben & Jerry or trampoline ice cream chains, that is what you are known for and there is a risk of diluting your brand identity if you begin offering a range of different products. Cyclical industries are often tied to economic conditions in a country. The building industry is one example. However, like the ice cream operators, it is not necessarily easy or feasible for a building company to diversify into other different products or services. If building construction rates are in decline, then building supplies, architectural services and surveying services are also in decline, which are sub-industries more closely linked to the building industry. Chocolate and cosmetic sales are often higher in slight economic downturns, however, I doubt a building company is going to attempt to become a competitor to Cadbury. As you can tell here, it is not easy to come up with counter-cyclical diversification strategies, and companies in the industries like construction and mining tend to simply ride the waves of boom and bust because they do not have the capabilities or perhaps want to operate in different markets when their industry is having a period of decline. One example that could be considered is that of debt collection. Pretty much any industry in decline will experience a rise in loan defaults. So companies that could diversify into managing debt collection services might be able to increase their cash flow during industry downturns. To recap, counter-seasonal and counter-cyclical diversification is about how organisations can adapt to external influences such as changing seasons and economic cycles that may significantly affect their business. They need to be careful about what sort of diversification to consider, as it may require different capabilities to what they currently have. Where diversification can be achieved, an organisation may be able to reduce their volatility in revenue over the year or years, and can potentially also open up a new market that they can grow into a star or cash cow for the company.